What is up guys, Brennan here with Wake Productions bringing you a new video. Um, so a while ago I posted up a video of my buddy Clinton's here car on the dyno and we came to the conclusion that he needed an intake with shorter runners as the power was falling off at around like 62, 6300 RPM or something like that. So um, one of my other friends, Bud, ended up parting out his race car and going back to a streetcar type scenario and uh, sheet metal MMR intake ended up coming up for sale so Clinton bought it. Um, if you're looking for uh, accurate data to determine whether you should buy an intake manifold like this, I mean, you're gonna wanna go to a professional. We're not professionals here. Um, Clinton is self-tuned, we're self, almost self-building. So um, really this is just kind of, this is what our experience was and um, where we're gonna go from here so I'm gonna show a couple dyno runs show some of the issues we ran into and then maybe talk a little bit about the dyno graphs For my eagle-eyed viewers, you will notice that the passenger side wastegate has no clamp connecting it to the exhaust, or the hot side, so um, we had a pretty big uh, boost issue here we had to deal with that first couple hours, um, not couple hours, couple minutes before we realized what was going on. <laughs> So what ended up happening here was there was too much of a variance in the tolerance between the fuel rail and the intake manifold. I'm not sure if these fuel rails are an MMR design, I'm not sure who built them, but there was just too much tolerance there. And the um, fuel rail ended up walking off of a couple of the injectors which caused it to spray fuel all over the passenger side, which was pretty awful. Um, so coupled with spending a couple hours having to find an exhaust clamp that ended up coming off of Travis's car. Um, he decided to call it for a day and hit it once again when um, he could go home and grab his, I think they're aeromotive fuel rails from his stock intake. So um, here's day two. So what are we changing this time? Nothing. No changes? Just more boost? Taking a little timing out. Taking a little timing out, adding more boost. Now with the short runner, do you think we need to move around the intake cams at all? Uh, we're definitely going to have to try some cam timing to try and get the boots to come on a little earlier. Because right yeah. now, 5500, yeah, that's not going to work. Yep. So we found a little lean spot where it's going to 0.88, right? Yeah, 88. Right. So we're going to add some more fuel in that section and see if she cleans up. I think you found it. on that side.
right there. So essentially the board around the injector was too large in the intake? No, I don't know exactly what, but it, where the injector goes into the intake is leaking. Leaking. On. Both, uh, what side is that, Bank one? You didn't miss an O-ring, did you? So we got a leak somewhere back in here. But it's worthy. So if you look yeah. right here, it's really easy to see right here. See how there's a weld on that side of where the injector is? Yep. So I think that's the problem on that side, on five and eight. So the injector's just not seating correctly? Probably. Okay. It's probably just crap -tastic. I guess we'll have to go for round three, guys. What do you think of the MMR intake? Ambush eh. interview. Eh. 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 It's starting to work after all the problems, but it's working. If I can figure out that little boost spike or boost loss right there. Yeah, we got a little boost dip. Yeah. If you can figure that out, I think it'd be a lot better. So as you can see, it's definitely a high RPM manifold. Yeah, it carries the power all the way out to what I lay off. It's a shorter runner, obviously. Um, probably would benefit from aftermarket cams and ported heads. I don't even know if you can hear me with the fans, but whatever. <laughs> Makes me want to see a boss intake. All right, so here is the uh, final dynographs, the blue one being the stock intake and the red one being the MMR short runner. Obviously, I put up the uncorrected numbers, so, I mean, if you're a regular of the channel, you probably know my opinion on turbocharged cars and correction factors. So, um, more or less, uh, you can see the MMR intake outperforming the stock intake at the upper RPM limits. Um, there's definitely some more optimization that can occur both in the tuning and in the overall build. So, also if you look at the boost, um, he was running a little bit more boost on the MMR intake. Um, there's going to be a little bit of variance in that too, in that I think he dropped a half a point of compression on his new motor. So that variance might equal out. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of variables at play here. But um, overall, you can tell that the MMR intake was definitely making more power up high in the band. Um, and that gap would probably even increase further if he went to a bigger aftermarket cam. I think he's just running Boss exhaust cams and stock intake. Um, so a bigger cam and then um, ported heads because he's still running the stock heads. So if he ran it out further, obviously the short runner would do better and better. So um, some other interesting sections that mid range, like between four and six, that was kind of unsuspect, unexpected to me. Um, I figured the stock one would kind of kill it in that area, but based off of how he had the cam set, it looks like the um, the MMR pulled away through there by like 25 to 50 horse. Um, Overall, really, it's just going to come down to if his track times improve. Um, he was at Streetcar Takeover, and I will be putting up that video here in a few, but um, the car wasn't performing well. I think there was possibly a crack in the intercooler, and it was just dumping out boost, and he couldn't really do anything with it. But um, more on that later. I'll probably do that in a later video, because we still don't know what the issue was yet. But overall... Um, Short runners, uh, it's just kind of what we anticipated before we bought. Short runner kind of just moves your power curve further up the RPM band where you need it when you're drag racing. So, um, 
So definitely take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. Like I said in the beginning of the video, we aren't professionals. Um, and I think I'm just going to wrap up the video with that. So uh, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. And I'll be sure to be covering more builds as time progresses. And I will be putting up my street car takeover videos. Hopefully within a week or so. I, I got a good amount of footage. But um, it was a really fun event overall. So with that being said, you guys have a good day.